How's it going guys, I'm Josh, and today I'm gonna help you find your editing style. Now I could talk all about tapping into your emotions, making mood boards on Pinterest, channeling your last breakup, or give you a lot of vaguely inspirational quotes about what it means to be an artist. To save everybody time, I'm just gonna jump into seven of the most popular editing styles I see all over Instagram and in the photo world, how to do these in Lightroom, when they do and don't work, and how to make these styles your own. Now, before we jump in, a quick preface, why does it matter to have an editing style? So having a unique style makes your work stand out more, it makes your work look more congruent, and style helps you convey emotion with your photos. For example, a black and white photo has a very different energy from a very vibrant, colorful one. One thing I'm sure we've all seen on Instagram is those people who have committed to one very particular style and it makes their feed look awesome. Awesome. Now, I highly recommend you do not do this when you're a beginner, the reason being it's really limiting. And when you're still learning how to edit, it's great to be experimenting with all these different types of styles to see what works for you, what you really dig, rather than just typecasting yourself. Now, personally, if you look at my feed on Instagram, it is also all over the place. The reason being, I love having the option for variety. Does the feed not look as good as my consistent styled counterparts? It does not. However, I like the option. And last thing, before we jump into Lightroom, huge thanks to Logitech for partnering with me on this video. Their craft keyboard has this awesome creative crown tool, which helps make my editing process much easier and more intuitive, and it's been a blast to use. Starting off with style number one, the dramatic black and white photo. Now this was popularized way back in the day with landscape photographer Ansel Adams, still life photographer Edward Weston, and a bunch of other people. However, we've seen this modernized with urban and street photography with Instagrammers like Jason M. Peterson, who's really known for this look. So let's talk about how to make this happen. For the high contrast black and white, name of the game is of course high contrast and high clarity. So starting off, we're gonna go ahead and make our photo black and white, naturally. Be very careful with clarity. Beginners love doing this way too much and it looks kind of cool if you take it all the way, but it's also kind of obnoxious. So I recommend just playing it cool, bring it down, try never to go past 50, and 30 is a pretty good, intense, but not completely overdoing it look. The last thing we do to make our photo even more dramatic is messing with our shadows and highlights and whites and blacks. So it'd be all about bringing up our highlights and whites and so making the white parts of the photo a little bit brighter and making the dark parts of the photo even darker. This takes a lot of fine tuning. We're gonna start just by messing with the blacks. We're gonna lower them and you'll see that these dark areas are losing a lot of detail, just becoming this nice, deep black. We can play with our shadows too, which will darken a slightly different part of our photo. There is a ton more you can do to keep refining this image. However, just to show you guys the progress we have made, there it is. It's gotten a lot more intense. You'll see we lost a little more detail in the dark parts of the photo, and it's looking nice and very Jason M. Peterson-y. So, very good stuff. Moving on to style number two. Style number two is the film look. So let's say you've got a bunch of friends who don't know much about photography, but they shoot on film, they've got some cool looking film, and their shots always look so good, even when the composition is bad. Did that get too personal? I don't know. So let's talk about how to recreate that look shooting digital in Lightroom. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna save our previous edit by creating a snapshot. So hit this snapshot button over here. We're gonna do black and white two, create. And now I can always go back to this edit when I want to, or I can go look at my original edit, and then I can go ahead and reset it and start fresh for this film look. There are a bunch of different components to making your photo look nice and filmy, but my favorite ones, we're gonna start with saturation. We're gonna bring our saturation down just a little bit to have some nice faded colors. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom of this panel and find the grain. So grain is the classic film look and it's completely faked in Lightroom. However, it's still gonna look awesome and retro. So I'm gonna do just 40 and 40 for a mountain size and it'll look pretty good. You can play with this and just a heads up, don't overdo it because it looks intense. And if it's not too apparent here, I can just zoom in and you'll see here's the grain before and then if we turn that off, Here's what it'll look like after. Now we're gonna scroll back up to our tone curve. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fade our blacks out a little bit. So put a center point, put one right here, put one right here. So we're gonna half it and then half that again. I'm gonna grab this last point and just make that line flat. So you'll see that our blacks are now becoming grayed out a little bit, which looks pretty cool. So just to show you before and after, 
Now the last couple things we want to play with is our split toning. So this is when you get to add the color to your highlights and shadows. Now you really have to experiment here. That's looking pretty good. There's still so, so much more that we can do and playing with colors is a huge part of that. So let's move on to number three, complementary colors. Understanding complementary colors is just about color theory and it looks really great seeing two colors that are on opposite ends of the color wheel. So blue and orange is a really popular example and you have to really just look at your photo and see what kind of colors you already have as potential. So I see we have this really nice blue that keeps your eye in the center of the shot and this red right here, which is pretty close to orange. So what I wanna do is I wanna emphasize these two colors while bringing down all the other ones. So we're gonna go ahead and do it first, just to add a little bit more excitement into the shot. I'm gonna increase our contrast a little bit, lower our blacks. So now let's start playing around with our HSL tab. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start messing with these blues. And a great little tip here is just pressing this targeted adjustment button. Now you can select a color that might be composed of multiple colors and drag it up and down to see how it changes. So I'm gonna drag it down. I like that deeper blue. I'm gonna go to saturation. Gonna bring it up a little bit. And let's now focus on these reds. Same thing again, we're gonna bring up these reds, bring it down because I think they become a little sharper, and let's increase the saturation. And now, the most important part here is actually decreasing the saturation on these colors that we don't want. So I'm gonna go ahead and decrease the yellow right here, bring this down, and we'll decrease that green too. And you'll see suddenly the focus just starts to shift inward a little bit. You're not as distracted by a random vibrant yellow light, and your eye goes more toward the subject of the photo, where you want your eye to be. We could also play with the oranges potentially. Now this is going to affect this part right here as well as this because there's orange and red in this selection. And I think I'm okay with these oranges. I just really don't like the green. We can make the hue of the greens a little bit more yellow and that'll help me desaturate them even more, which is a good trick. And we can even make the oranges more red if we want to really keep everything color consistent. So that's looking pretty cool. I think our reds are actually a little oversaturated now. So I'm going to bring them down just a little bit. And last thing I'm going to do, I realize the skin tones got really messed up here. So I'm going to create a little adjustment brush. We're going to select the face right here with a nice small brush. And we're going to let's cool the temperature down a little bit and make it a little more green. And there we have it. So the face is now a more reasonable skin tone. Highlights, shadows, and whites and blacks will give you so much more potential. And just to show you my other edit that I recently made, this is where I left off. So tons of different options, but you'll see I did do the same thing of emphasizing the blues and reds. Sticking with color theory, we're now gonna talk about style number four, analogous colors. So while complementary colors are colors on the opposite end of the color wheel, analogous colors are colors around the same side or corner. So for this shot, I'm looking at it, and the prominent colors we have are blue down with the shirt, we have red with the socks in this area right here, and pink. So they're all along the same kind of third of the color wheel. So we're gonna emphasize these colors while de-emphasizing the rest of the colors. I've already adjusted everything from exposure to clarity, just to give the photo the proper lighting, and now we're gonna mess with the colors. First off, we're gonna start with our luminance. We're gonna use the targeted adjustment icon. We're gonna grab this pink and just bring it up and down to see how it changes. So I think the color becomes a little more stark if I lower it. And now let's mess with our blues. So I'm gonna grab that blue, and you'll see there's a lot of cool blue that really comes out over here when you lower the blue's luminance. And that's what I absolutely love. And now let's go on to saturation. So let's bring up all these colors. So let's grab this pink, pull it up. And you'll see that it's affecting both the red and the orange. Sometimes it's nice just to refine individually and see how they change. So I'm gonna increase the red. And I'm not gonna increase orange too much because it affects the skin tones more than I'd like and I don't need Josh to be overly tan. And now let's adjust those blues. Oh yeah, I'm gonna bring those right up. Looks absolutely beautiful. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna desaturate the greens because we have some green over here that I'm not a huge fan of. And you'll see that when I drag this, it's affecting both the aquas and the blues more so than the greens, which is good. So I'm just gonna adjust the aquas individually and there we have it. So now we have 
all these three colors very strongly emphasized and everything else quite de-emphasized, which makes for a really nice pop in the photo. I really dig this. And alternatively, we could do a different tone of colors like green, orange, and yellow would be a good option. And I'll show you guys what I've done just experimenting with that. I think that this is way oversaturated and probably too green, but just to give you an idea of what you can do with every single photo. But it's best to start by looking at what colors you already have, seeing what really works, and maybe if you want, you can save it as a snapshot and then try experimenting with something even more out there. Our next two styles are high and low saturation. Now these are very communicative styles in that you can add these to everything we've been talking about previously. So let's start off with low saturation. Low saturation is a really tasteful look. And one of my favorite Instagrammers who's a master of this is my friend Paula or Moneris on Instagram. And what she does is she lowers the saturation of the entire image and then she brings up the saturation of just one color. For this boat image, I'm gonna combine complementary colors with the low saturation look. So what I've already done is I've adjusted the temperature to be very blue and yellow. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my vibrance up just a little bit, and then I'm gonna, let's say 15 is good, and then I'm gonna bring my saturation down the same amount, maybe a little bit more. Let's do 25. So it's got nice undersaturated look right now, but the vibrance adds just a nice little kick to some slightly different color tones as the saturation. And now we're going to start messing with the HSL tab. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with luminance and we're going to play with these oranges here. So I think I want to make these oranges pop and bring down the blues and the greens you see throughout the rest of the photo. So I'm going to latch on to one of these oranges just sort of play around with it, bringing it up and down to see what I like. Now it's really gonna come out in our saturation. So we're gonna bring our oranges up, just grab on again and pull it way up. So yeah, now we have these nice, beautiful oranges and yellows. And now we're gonna bring down the rest of the color in this photo. So let's latch onto these blues, bring it down just a little bit. We don't want the photo to be black and white, but we do want it to lose a little bit of color. And let's play with the luminance of these blues too. So I notice I get a little more mountains. The mountains are a little more stark when you bring it down just a little bit. So I'm gonna leave it right around here. To compare the beginning versus the end, you'll see that the colors were just way off originally, and now they're looking nice, dramatic, and those yellows are really beautiful. You know those tacky photos you see in souvenir shops, like a black and white New York City street, except for one colored yellow taxi, Think of this as the less tacky version of that. This is actually tasteful and I really dig this edit. Style number six, we have the high saturation, king of the Instagram editing style. And you see this in a lot of hype Instagrammers who love to have those colors that are so bright they just want to punch you in the face. For the sake of time, I'm going to leave all of these pre-adjusted. We're just going to start with vibrance and saturation. So the natural assumption is for a highly saturated photo, we should just drive saturation way up. Now what happens though is while we do get a nicer looking sunset, well this is obviously too oversaturated, but you'll see that these oranges look gross and the greens are oversaturated, it's just more than we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our saturation back down to zero, we're gonna increase our vibrance just a little bit, and I found this is a little more subtle and this really helps, and the move here is actually just to increase the saturation in our HSL tab. And per usual, this helps us saturate only the parts of the photo that we want. So targeted icon, and let's just play with these blues, pinks, and oranges to make them exactly how we want them. So let's increase the saturation of the blues quite a bit. Let's make those oranges pop, oranges and reds. And you'll see that looks like a little bit too much. You see these lines there. So we're gonna control Z that, bring it back down, and bring it up again, just not too much. And let's bring those oranges up and some yellows. Beautiful. Now let's actually go ahead and adjust the luminance just a bit because it could use some help. So we're going to bring the blues down, make them a little sharper. I want that red to stand out just a little more, not too much. Same goes for orange. Bring that down. So yeah, typically to make these colors pop, you're bringing them down a little bit in luminance and then up in saturation. So that's looking pretty good. I think I want to bring my shadows up just a bit because the greens over here and this area down here is a little too dark for me. So shadows up a little more. That looks pretty good. 
Maybe this photo is in good shape. So moving on to our last and final style. Final style today, number seven, is isolated focus. Now what this is for us is we're gonna figure out ways to draw your eye toward the subject in the center of the screen, or in this case, the slight left for this Vietnamese bull. As you can see, I've already pre-adjusted all this. It's really more about just guiding your eye, giving it that extra push toward our beautiful bull. So first, we're gonna add a vignette, which adds those nice black edges around the side of the frames. So this is a nice subtle one. I never go more than 16 to 20 or so, because it just gets to be too extreme, as you can see. So we'll leave it right around 16. And the next thing, we're gonna use graduated filters. Now we're gonna use these to make the sky look dramatic and dark. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the exposure down just a little bit. So let's do 0.9 to one. One looks good and let's bring the blacks down. And now, let's just start from the top and bring it down to here. So now you'll see it brings this really nice gradient where the sky just looks even more ominous than it already did. And it was about to rain. This is really how it looked to me when we saw it. This darker sky up top really just helps point your eye toward the bottom of the frame. Now, in this right-hand corner, it's all not quite as vignetted as this, just because of the way the light was hitting it. So I'm gonna add another one, very similar to the first, just at a nice little angle like so. Now, graduated filters and vignettes both work very similar to each other if you're using them like this. However, the graduated filter has a very different shape, which is really nice because I wanted it to be a little bit more extensive. So I'm actually gonna drag this out even further and you'll see it gradually gets lighter and lighter from this very dark corner Comparing this to before, you'll see that now your eye is really pushed into the center of the frame. And there you have it, seven unique editing styles that you can combine, tweak, and experiment with to make them your own. Now I'd be curious to know what common editing styles you think I forgot. So leave a comment down below letting me know. Maybe I'll make a follow-up video, including your suggestions. Now thank you so much to Logitech for sponsoring this video. It's been a blast not having to use my right hand to adjust the sliders and this really simple crown tool. And if you guys wanna check out my nine hour long beginner photography course, you can find a link to it in the description down below. It covers everything from shooting to editing to Lightroom basics and marketing your work. I think you'll really enjoy it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe for more videos and I will see you eventually.